presenting how the author known as Shakespeare probably got his name. Here is the situation as it existed in late Elizabethan times. Imagine that you are William Cecil, Lord Treasurer, member of the Privy Council, and one of the most important men, and probably the most important man in the kingdom. You have amassed a great fortune and built great mansions and estates like this one. You are also literally Queen Elizabeth I's right-hand man. She makes almost, almost no decisions without consulting you first. But you have this son-in-law, Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. He married your daughter Anne in 1571, but was estranged from her for many years, from 1576 to 1581. Furthermore, he insists on hanging out with writers and commoners, penning plays and poems to the detriment of his prestige and reputation. More damaging still, he hangs out with actors like Richard Burbage, Sly, Nathan Field, who is also a minor playwright. You would rather that your son in law hang out with people like William Stanley, who would be De Vere's actual son-in-law. Stanley was Lord Lieutenant of Lancashire and Vice Admiral of Lancashire as well. Or how's about hanging out with or to nobles like George Talbot, the sixth Earl of Shrewsbury. Perhaps you would like him to be more like his brother-in-law, that is, De Vere's brother-in-law, Peregrine Bertie, who is at one time an envoy to Denmark. He could even be more like his cousin, Sir Francis Bacon, natural philosopher, continental traveler, helper in developing ciphers, and also a budding attorney general. Well, what are you going to do about this guy? Well, if I were William Cecil, and there was no way that I could dissuade him from doing these things, I would insist that he wear a mask. Now, the mask can't be just anything. Not this type of mask unless there's a plague happening. What's he going to do? Well, presenting the name of the game, actually the game of the name. 
and my hypothetical way in which he developed his pen name. So, being an honest Earl and a noble who values this above all others, he wants to do the following. He wants to honor his family legacy. And the family motto is, Vero, Nile, Various. Nothing is truer than truth. So what he wanted to do was be as honest as he could be to himself and to his work. also wanted to pay homage to his prowess at the tilt yard and at the jousts. He won two tournaments. He also wanted to do something to honor one of his titles as the Viscount Volbeck. The crest is a lion holding a broken spear. So what sort of last name do you want to have, given all these little items? Spear? No, sounds like the writer himself is broken. Breakspear, well, can't have that. I am not Pope Adrian the Fourth, he would say. Adrian the Fourth's surname was Breakspear. Breaker, probably too negative. Spear shaker, like the lion, well, that gets a bit close, a bit closer, that's good. Spear, too clumsy. He probably went and snapped his fingers and said, kind of makes sense because in a 1578 address to him by Gabriel Harvey and published in this book, Gratulanius, uh, Gratulat, oh, sorry, Gratulationis Valdenensis, pardon me, and presented before the Queen Elizabeth and the court, he said to De Vere, Thy countenance shakes spears. But what about the first name? I don't think De Vere wanted to make his first name anything from the Bible because that would probably be somewhat sacrilegious. Since he was writing lowly plays, which were the provenance of the lowest sort of writer. Then he remembered this book, the Psalms of David and others, with Mr. John Calvin's commentaries published in 1571. It was translated by his uncle, Arthur Golding. Dedicated to him. Having an eidetic memory, that is a photographic memory, as he says in Sonnet 122, he says, Thy gift 
thy tables, meaning books, are within my brain, full charactered with lasting memory. So having this photographic or lasting memory, he remembered Um, 187. The Psalms number is curiously a multiple of 17, 17 times 11. He would also have remembered And this section. If any man alike, to what purpose they carrieth their harps with them so far from their country? The prophet mentioneth even this thing as a badge of faith and a testimony of godly zeal, that whereas the Levites were be stripped of all their worldly goods, yet they carefully kept still their harps as a precious household stuff to apply them again to their former use when time should serve. It also says the following. Moreover, by the willows he seemeth to be token that the banks which were beset with them were very delectable for coolness and the prophet therefore denieth that any shadows were they never so pleasant were able to shake off the sorrow that had settled itself deeplier in the hearts of the faithful than that they could admit any worldly comfort or delight truly the very commodiousness of the place inasmuch as they sat upon the river's bank, sheltered with the shadow of trees, might have provoked and allured them to take their harps and to allay their grief with singing. The willows he seemeth to be token. Sheltering someone. Do something with that. So what can he make out of it? William. It's the only, one of the only names not in the Bible. Furthermore, it is an anagram. I am Will. Coincidentally, from the period at the top of this section to the W and Will are 17 characters and spaces. There are 68 letters in the large section that within brackets, 17 times 4. period to the word true, as in truly, are 57 words, 17 plus 40. The 17th word in that sentence is were. It could be spelled V-V-E-R-E. -E. The 34th word is also were that can be spelled V V E R E. Furthermore, the line with the second were on it has V E R at the beginning. The 
words outside of brackets in this little section from moreover is self. Below shake. Which is right below will. And of course, we have the word true. And this passage. They sat upon the river's bank, sheltered with the shadow of trees. The shadow of trees certainly sounds like something for the stage. And of course, he was going to disprove the prophet who said, shadows were not able to shake off the sorrow. So he would do that by using the combination of William, shake, spear. Here are three quartos published by Valentine Sims. First one is The Tragedy of King Richard II, published in 1598. Second is Much Ado About Nothing, published in 1600. And the third is The History of Henry IV, with the Battle at Shrewsbury between the King and Lord Henry Percy, surnamed Henry Hotspur of the North, published in 1604. Notice that Sims has spelled the name Shakespeare three different ways. For the 1598 quarto, it's William Shake Dash Spear. The 1600 quarto is William Shake Spear, one word. Finally, in the 1604 quarto, it is W Shake. Spear. Also, it is newly corrected by him. These are three distinctly different ways to spell the name. The first name has the hyphen, also the dash, whatever you call it. One connects shake to spear by absolutely nothing. And the third one just has simply W, which could stand for Walter, William, Wyatt, or whatever. Here's an oddity. We have two Quartos, published in the same year, for Nathaniel Butter, 1608. The first one on the left is shake hyphen spear. The one on the right is S-H-A-K hyphen spear. Both titles are practically identical. When you look at the one on the left, there are 17 letters after the two V's, and V in Gematria has a value of 20, so that is a 40-17 illusion. The one on the right has a proper uppercase W, and it consists of 17 letters. The 
There are also 17 letters in the first part of the actor's blurb. As it was played before the King's Majesty at Whitehall upon St. Stephen's Night in Christmas holidays. The one on the left has 17 words in the last four printed lines. The one on the right consists of 17 printed lines. Both titles have exactly 40 words in them. There are also 40 words in the last five lines of the one on the right. So within the space of a few years, we have five different types of spelling of the name. V, V, Ilium, Shake, Hyphen, Sphere, Uppercase, W, Ilium, Shock, hyphen spear, William Shake hyphen spear, William Shakespeare, one word, W Shake hyphen spear. Surely no one would mistake this for a real name, would they? Incidentally, all of these examples are from the first folio. For watching. Mm -hmm.